not hear us only, but do us also. We have heard a lot this three uh, days, this weekend. We've heard a lot from the man of God. We've heard. And we're still going to hear. What are, what are we doing with all the things we hear? It's not enough for us to just hear them and then go and say, ah, family week was very interesting, was very tough. That's not enough. We need to put in practice the things we have heard. And it's by the grace of God. By us being intentional, like he rightly mentioned, you know, when he was ministering, by us being intentional about it, that this is the word of God, and this is what the Lord is saying, and I will do it. I say yes, Lord. I say yes to your will, to your way. You, you, you hear and you say yes and you obey. Hallelujah. So, that is part of my message this morning. Where I, I didn't want to miss it. That's why I brought it forth, you know, before I go into other part of the message. So, the, the church is a Christian family. Likewise, the Christian home. Christian family. So, and it is expected of us to manifest the character of Christ. Now, like I said earlier, the Christian family is the family that is saved. It's not just the church attender, they hear and obey the word of God. And Acts 16 31 says, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house, and thy house. Now, this is talking about the nuclear family. Believe and thou shalt be saved. The Christian home, the nuclear family, the father, the mother, and the children, the Christian family is the family that is saved. When you, when you go into the Christian home, you see, you practically almost see, you know, Christ, feel Christ there as a true Christian, not just the religious one. Where the father takes the responsibility of being the head of the home, it is you know, playing his own role as the head of the home, as the covering over the family, you know, and giving direction. And the mother also plays a role as a mother and as as, as a, 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 a intercessor, interceding for the family, and then training and the children in the way of the Lord. Yes, the father and the mother are supposed to do this work together, training the children, bringing up the children, you know, in the way of the Lord. But it's more a responsibility upon the mother. Why? Because they are always with the mother. Praise God. The father would have gone out. These days, it's a bit difficult because both the father and mother, they go out look in search of what? Meat and drink. Meanwhile, the kingdom of God, what it will become. No matter how busy you are, if it's once a week, have time together with your family, teaching them the word of God. The father is not there. The mother should take that place. Praise God. That's why we are two. The Bible says two are better than one. Where the father is not able to, you know, do it, the mother should, should be able to stand for him. The mother should be able to, you know, spend time praying for the husband, praying for the children. Hallelujah. When I just got married, you know, I was working as a teacher in a private school one of those big private schools in Lagos. And it was tough for me. But at that time, I needed to do that job for some things for the family to know, to, to be able to uh, support the man of God. Sorry, I forgot to say greetings from Apostle Greg, <laughs> my beloved husband. You know, and from the family, the KICCI family, wonderful family of God. Where they both belong. They came, they came out of KICCI family. So when you see them, you are seeing KICCI family. That is how we are. We are not different. So emulate them. Hallelujah. Emulate them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, so after some years, you know, by clear instruction from God, I'm not saying every woman here should leave their job and sit at home. Oh, I'm not saying that. But for some reasons, I had to leave my job to pay more attention to the church and to the home, the Christian family. So the Christian family needs a mother for it to thrive, for it to 
to you know grow, for you to be strong, you need a mother. And as a woman, don't get too busy for your home. Don't get too busy for your home. If, the, if your job is taking too much of your time, please, I don't know what to say, but find a way, find time for your family. Find time for your family. Don't get too busy for your family. I will end it there. I'm not saying resign your job, but don't get too busy for your family. The man cannot be busy, and you, the woman, you are busy at the same time. Praise God. And if it's the woman that is busy, then the man should be there for the family. Two of you cannot go and leave the family. You will not like what you will get at the end of the day. Praise the Lord. So I left my job. <laughs> and I can, I, can, I can assure you that things were much more better than it was when I was, you know, working. You see, even the financial uh, 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 supplies, it increased. Why? Because I was doing it better. I was doing it better on my knees. <laughs> Amen. I was doing it better on my knees. So a Christian mother should spend time praying. Is that the women, your first role is intercession. Intercede. Pray and pray and pray until something happens. I give God the glory. But Grace is is a fruit of intercession. Father, I give you all the glory. Praise God. Are you listening to me? You cannot do it by yourself. I will pray and pray and pray and pray. Sometimes you will pray and not even see. It will look like the prayer is not even. You know, but at the appointed time, hey, 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 it will show. Your labor will not be in vain. The day Grace said ministered in church, I said, hey, Father, I thought I would be wasting my time. The day she ministered, you know, I said, God, thank you. And I know that God who has brought her this far will continue to take her to greater heights and shall be from glory to glory. And the brother too, gentle like Apostle Michael. As Stephen. If you see Stephen, he's a gentle guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a, don't mind them all. He lived with me all, so I know him. The gentle guy. It's Rosemary that is. No, but Rosemary, I like that aspect of him because if you are gentle like him, everything goes well. So, I give you thumbs up. You know, you are doing a good job. Okay? Keep up the good work. Mm? And God will continue to strengthen you. Mm? Praise the Lord. So, that is just the nuclear family. The father, as the head, gives spiritual covering and direction to the family. A father that is not giving direction, he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. And when we bring our children up in the way of the Lord, they will model godliness to the world. Their lives will preach the gospel to other children. Praise God. By the grace of God again, you know, I know what Grisette's life has, you know, how her life has impacted others in church. And when I see them, I say, Father, thank you. I couldn't have done it alone. You know? It's not, sometimes it's not just by talking, shouting. Hey, do it like this, do it like this. You know, when they see her, they too want to be like her. You know, they, they like what they are seeing. And so they want to be like her. Praise God. And the Lord God will continue to strengthen you, Grace say, in Jesus' name, to make us proud, as you have always done. Amen. Now, we cannot teach or model for our children what we don't have. Eh? You cannot model for your children what you don't have. You cannot teach them what you don't have. The word of God that you do not have inside of you, you cannot teach them. Praise the Lord. So you as a parent, you have to first of all fill yourself with the word of God. Fill yourself with the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. And then let your lifestyle be the lifestyle of Christ. And then you'll be able to model it for your children. And your children will also model it when they grow up to their own children and it goes on and on and on and the world is impacted. Hallelujah. So it starts from us, the parents, modeling our children and when they go out, they show the example, they model other children and on and on and on and on. Praise God. The family, the Christian family is a family that loves God. Hmm. We cannot do without loving God. Hallelujah. 
And Joshua 24, 15 says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So no matter what, no matter what they are saying, no matter what is happening, no matter the storm, you will serve the Lord. Amen. Now, we cannot give to the world, like I said earlier, what we don't have. So we will look at some scriptures. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is the new creature. All things are passed away. All things have become new. And this is the first step of godliness. What is how to become godly, you know, modernly godliness to the world. is to first of all be in Christ. Be in Christ, not outside Christ. Outside Christ. Being in Christ. Hallelujah. We are no longer influenced by our sinful nature. When you are in Christ, Christ, all things are passed away. We are no more influenced by our we are no more influenced by our sinful nature. We are tempted but not influenced. Yes, we can be tempted, but we do not allow our lives to be influenced. And if for any reason you are weak, you fall. Stand up. Cry out for mercy. That is where they are missing it again in the church. You know, they said God has forgiven you your sins, your past, present, and future sin. That is a, that is a big error. It's only the sin that you confess that you ask God to forgive you, that he will forgive you. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The word confess. So if you don't confess, if you leave it there, say, ah, God understands. That is another trick. Because the devil knows that when you come to God at any point in time asking him for mercy, he's the God who is rich in mercy. His mercies are new every morning. He will forgive you. So he knows that, and so he's not bringing a, a, a doctrine that will just make you relax and not think about the fact that you need to go to God, you know, to ask him for mercy. Ask him. He will forgive you. It's not too much. He's your loving father. An example in the Bible is the prodigal son. He went away, misbehaved, and came back to the father. And when he came back, the father forgave him. That's how much, you know, God loves us too. The way the, 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 the prodigal son, the father, loved him. That is how God loves us too. So, in fact, if he, does, if he does not love us, if not for his love, he will send his only begotten son to come and die for us. So, because of the love that he has for us, you know, we go before him in repentance, in, you know, to forgive us. Praise God. And don't live in self-condemnation. Don't condemn yourself. And I'm not worthy. You know, just like the prodigal son was doing, I'm not worthy. In fact, I want to be a servant when I get back. No, don't condemn yourself. Just go to him and surrender yourself to him. Hallelujah. Surrender yourself to him. Christians, we need to stand and take our place as it is right now with what is happening. Let's not just relax and say, hey, God has always said, uh, no, God will do it. God will do it when we do our part, our own part by taking our place and declaring, taking authority over the spirit of the bond woman. If you don't take authority, <laughs> we, will be, we will be shocked at what we will see. So we have to take our place. And you cannot take your place living in sin, no. You cannot take your place living, allowing your flesh to dictate for you, to dictate to you what you should do. Eh? Allowing your flesh to get the better part of you. No. We can only take authority by receiving strength from God. The strength, the kind of strength that we need that even when they come face to face with us, we speak a word and, you know, they go. Hallelujah. These are the last days. These are the last days. And we need to stand. We need to take our place. And it starts from the home. It starts from the home. Parents, let's have time for our children. The man should love the wife. Men, love your wives. Wives, be submissive to your husband. Because the devil, that is, no, he's, the home is the devil's target. If the home is destroyed, then 
the society is destroyed. So the, the, the home is his target. But if the man and the wife are playing their role, their role like I said earlier, then victory is ours. And it will extend to the world. And we will model Christ. We will model, we'll be able to model Christ and righteousness to the world. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to look at, like I said before, Romans 4, 17. It says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And I said, meat and drink is lust of the flesh. It's not when you spend time on just the things of this world, the things of it, uh, no, on uh, satisfying the flesh. You cannot rise up spiritually. Praise the Lord. You cannot rise up spiritually. So you have to put a balance. Yes, even as we try to satisfy the, our, our, our flesh, but the Spirit should take a better the, 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 the Holy Spirit should take a better part of us. Amen. We should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Our, prayer, our prayers every day should be, God, fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. Because we cannot do it by ourselves. As we read, we read a part where you were made to understand that the flesh is always warring with the spirit. And then making it difficult for us. You know, but his grace is sufficient for us. Hallelujah. So I said, righteousness is the fruit of the spirit. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Meat and drink, loss of the flesh. But righteousness, fruit of the spirit. And peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Peace and joy, they are the consequences and reward of righteousness. Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. They are the consequences of righteousness. They are the reward of righteousness. So a Christian home a Christian family should exhibit to manifest peace and joy. There should be peace. There should be joy. There should be love. The wife, the man loving the, the wife, the wife respecting the husband and the children, you know, are of good character. They are well behaved. You just see God all over. You see, you know, you, you feel God in the home. Hallelujah. When you go into the home, like I went into their home this morning, you feel the peace of God in the home. That is what it should be. We organize, you know. The children are well behaved. All of them. Pastor Rosemary, kudos once more. God bless you. Mm -hmm. And you continue to strengthen and take you from glory to glory in Jesus' name. That is how it should be. A peaceful home. A joyful home. Yes, once in a while, because we are human, we are still in the flesh, the devil will want to come and, you know, but we will not let him. We will not. Because we know who we are in the Lord. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now we're just going to read through Galatians 5, 13 to 26. And then as we read, pay key attention to these scriptures. Pay, you know, attention. Key, you know, attention to each, to the, to each verse. Verse 13 says, For you have been called to live in freedom my brothers and sisters. But not to use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. The Christian family is the family of love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one, in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Hallelujah. In the Christian family, you know, love is Preeminent love is the main thing that keeps us going, that binds us together in unity. Verse 15 it says, If you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. Beware of destroying. I'm reading from the NLT version, so it's quite different from what you are seeing there. So I say, Let the Holy Spirit guide your life. Let the Holy Spirit do what? Guide your lives then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. This I say then, this is King James Version, the way he put it. It says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the laws of the flesh. If, you yield, if we yield ourselves to the leading of the Holy Spirit, we will not fulfill the laws of the flesh. 
We will not do what our sinful nature desires. Amen. If the sinful, verse 17, the sinful, the sinful nature wants to do evil. The sinful nature wants to do what? Evil, which is just the opposite of, opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desire that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. Amen. But when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you allow the Holy Spirit to direct you, you cannot fall under the law of Moses. Praise God. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very, very clear. Sexual immorality. When you follow the desires of the sinful nature, you know, we have what we call sexual immorality, impurity, lost school pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, and division. Praise the Lord. These are the things that will happen when we do not allow the Holy Spirit, you know, to, to fill us up. We would not allow the Holy Spirit to influence us, to direct us, to guide us. We would refuse to yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's where you find confusion, you find strife, you find quarreling and all the, you know, you find a, a, a sexual immorality. It should not be named among us as believers. You know, I heard him when he was talking yesterday, uh, one of the questions he was asking about faithfulness in marriage, you know. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, the man cannot be faithful to the wife. There cannot be faithfulness in marriage without the help of the Holy Spirit because the flesh will take over. Praise the Lord. The flesh will take over. So we allow ourselves, we should allow ourselves to be, to yield to the Holy Spirit, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And the more we allow ourselves to yield to the Holy Spirit, the more we get stronger, the more the grace of God will work in our lives. Amen. So envy, drunkenness, white parties, and other sins like this. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life, anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Praise God. I know our goal is for us to inherit the kingdom of God. So we will not just do everything here at the end of the day, you know, we become a castaway like Paul preached. No. After all the service, after, after all the hard work, the sacrifice, praise God. Then we become a castaway. It's not our portion in Jesus' name. Rather, we should obey the word of God because obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. Amen. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. What are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? And those are the things we are going to look at now. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. 